good evening everyone welcome on behalf of nivama wealth management i would like to welcome you all to this earnings call of ramkrishna forgings i would like to welcome the management and thank them for giving us this opportunity we have with us today mr naresh chalan managing director mr lalit ketan full time director and chief financial officer mr chaitanya chalan full time director and mr rajesh kundra company secretary and vice president finance before we begin may i remind you of the safe harbor the management may be making some forward looking statements that has to be understood in conjunction with the uncertainty and the risk the company faces i shall now hand over the call to mr lalit kumar ketan for opening remarks over to you lalit sir thank you raju ladies and gentlemen a very warm good evening and welcome everyone present on the call i hope you all have got an opportunity to go through our financial results and investor presentation which have been uploaded on stock exchanges as well as on the company's website we are pleased to report that the company has delivered steady results for the fourth quarter and financial year ended fy24 firstly let me give you a brief into the latest trend in the global commercial vehicle market the global cb market is expected to grow by 4% in volume and 6% in value from calendar year 23 to calendar year 29 this growth is primarily fueled by the expanding e-commerce sector which is driving demand for light and medium duty vehicles furthermore the development of smart cities and infrastructure projects like highways will fuel the demand for heavy duty vehicles india's cb market is experiencing exceptional growth making it fastest growing cb market globally initiatives such as make in india national electric mobility mission plan bs6 norms and vehicle strategic policy are set to further accelerate this growth this policy not only encourage but also promote innovation and sustainability within the indian cb market indian forging industry continues to be dominated by automotive sector holding a commanding 62% market share in forged components in terms of value the automotive sector contribute contribution is stood at us dollar 3.6 billion in calendar year 23 and slated to reach to usd 5.4 billion in cy 29 exhibiting a strong tagger of 7% the overall market is projected to expand by 39 lakh metric ton by cy 29 given the increased demand from the automotive segment supported by a growing working population and rising per capita income now let me highlight some key achievement of our company has made in the last quarter the company secured a significant contract worth us dollar 220 million that's so uh, over a, that contract will be executed over a period of 10 years making our entry to a new vertical within forging sector the strategic move focus on supplying tier 1 customers in the light vehicle segment across north america enhancing our global footprint and revenue stream <clears throat> furthermore we obtained the board approval for commencing manufacturing and supply operations in mexico enhancing our operational capabilities and market reach we have also received a substantial order from prestigious vande bharat train set value at rupees 270 crores this order to be supplied to the bhel trsl consortium making a pivotal moment in our journey towards excellence in rail infrastructure development moreover we remain committed to sustainability and corporate social responsibility we continue to launch initiative to reduce our carbon footprint promote diversity and inclusivity at work and support local communities now let's look at our financial performance for the quarter and year and fy24 In Q4 FY24 we achieved a revenue of 886.20 crore on the stand alone basis. This revenue is down by 20.754 due to the rate C issue otherwise uh, as the ships are stuck in the in, in channel otherwise revenue could have been higher by 20.754 in the quarter. And similarly for the year is 34896 crore and that could have been higher by that amount. However this represents an year and year growth of 16%. Our EBITDA margin for Q4 stands at 22.7 percent, as compared to 22.5 in Q4 FY23. Uh, the EBITDA expansion of 20 basis points 
which we are very sure that we will be able to have some uh, concentration from the customer to fill in the pity. Okay, sir. Second question on average realization. In terms of domestic quarter on quarter, there is an improvement. Export has fell despite uh, currency being favorable. So, any price rationalization or product mix or how one should look at that? <coughs> I think uh, exports, we have been almost uh, $35 in uh, cost reduction for, for January has impacted the realization. The Indian steel market has not, uh, our all the exports are tied up to the international steel market. So international commodity or international steel market on 1st January has declined by $35 per hour. So that impact has been felt in the realization part of Okay. And so lastly, whatever you can give some outlook on the three of these subsidiaries recently merged with. I think all the three subsidiaries right now, uh, Multitech Auto, I think we have given in our presentation uh, details. Multitech is performing, uh, I think better you can see the margins have considerably improved after we took over, I think almost uh, year on year if we say, there is a 200 basis point improvement in uh, margins in multi-tech and I think we are running the plant to full capacity and we expect individually with multi-tech the uh, market uh, the balance sheet to grow almost by 20% in the current uh, financial year. In terms of JMT, we are going to start production from this month onwards, first May onwards we are May onwards we are partially starting production and from July onward we are going to be full production in GMT. We expect this uh, I mean anything between 100 to 150 crore top line from GMT in this full year. ACL is already uh, started uh, manufacturing and I think in the last quarter also we have around 7.5 crore with this from ACL. This year we are looking at almost 120 crore of sales from ACL. Yes, sir, blended subsidiary margin of, of all this put together? I think uh, now 15. Console level, the margins which you see right now, we are expecting at least 150 basis points improvement in overall margin at the standard level. From Q4 level? Yes, Q4 level. 100 to 150 basis points improvement in margin for the consolidated value. Sir, thanks a lot and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Momuksh Mandlesha from Anandati. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for the opportunity and thanks for the detailed presentation. Uh, sir, on the, the recent order wins in the TV segment on the Mexico plant and the, the North America to $20 million order, uh, can you share what would be the current revenues from the TV segment? And what is expected revenues from this new order wins over the next two to three years? And can you share some thoughts on the profitability for the TV segment? Uh, will it be different from the overall business? And particularly with the other New Mexico plant, how there will be the profitability, sir? So recent, this Mexico plant is not yet in operation. We have just uh, located a space and everything. I think equipment and other things, Mr. Mason, will take another four to five months time. This year we are expecting only eight to ten crores revenue from our Mexico plant. And uh, following year, we are looking at substantial revenue to grow from Mexico plant operations. So, so right now, we uh, can access the visibility of that part. Going forward, I think uh, we will be updating the investors. For quarter and quarter. In terms of our overall PV exposure, right now, PV is close to 2 or 2.5% passenger vehicle. So we expect a double digit PV in next two years' time with the current order winds and the uh, Otherwise, if we have had Italy, I think going forward, we should look at a double digit TV in next two years. Thank you, sir. Uh, on this uh, one day, Bharat order of 270 crore, uh, what would be the timeline for this order? And also, uh, will this be uh, the fabrication capacity uh, which will be used for the service order? So, one day, Bharat order is to be using supplied by our, from our current capacity only. Uh, we are going to submit samples in the uh, first samples by October this year and uh, first batch civil production in by December this year 
and uh, following this contract for this 270 crores, this value is uh, to be supplied within next two financial years. So it will be covered up to FY26. Okay, sir. And just lastly, on the capex side, uh, on the standalone basis, uh, you plan to spend about 350 to 400 crore annually. Uh, what will be the breakup of the capex? Uh, I could not understand what is what exactly you mean by breakup. Uh, yeah, breakup, breakup, sir. Uh, what could be the uh, uh, breakup of the capex? Uh, will be the capacity expansion, the Mexico plant. Uh, no, I think cumulatively we are looking at almost 400 plus crores of capex this year. It, it, that includes standalone on the RKSL side uh, in terms of addition of capacities in the Mexico venture as well as in the capacity in uh, a brownfield activity in our current uh, plant. Thank you so much for this, sir. Thank you. My next question is from the line of Mr. Raghunandan from Nuama Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Congratulations on strong numbers. Uh, sir, firstly, on the light vehicles, uh, as you indicated, uh, given the receipt of uh, orders, you would look at the contribution of light vehicles uh, uh, or passenger vehicles to increase in revenue. Uh, if you take a medium term aspiration, uh, how would you see the share of light vehicles going up? And uh, also, if you can talk about whether uh, it will have a similar kind of profitability. Okay, light vehicle in terms of overall balance sheet uh, in the consolidated level, at, including multi tech and other places, we are looking at almost more than double digit in the next two years' time. And I think in terms of profitability, we are looking at sustained profit, what we are doing right now, in the similar band. Got it, sir. Uh, sir, in the near term, uh, we have the coal forging capacity, uh, which is likely to be operational in quarter one of FI25. Uh, the project is fully booked by orders. Uh, how do you see this uh, uh, ramp up of order execution? Uh, can can we see the peak uh, level of execution in FI26? And for this capacity, what would be the peak revenue? I think in terms of cold closing, uh, campus and other things are going to start uh, going out from quarter two or this year. We expect quarter four onwards, hundred percent utilization to start from that facility. We are looking at full production or full utilization in a project to six companies. And at peak, we are looking at almost uh, 250 crore rupees of land from this. Uh, 250 crore, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, got it. That would be like a 2x gross asset turnover. Thank yes. you, sir. And uh, in terms of uh, GMT Auto, uh, you know, given that. Uh, the forging division is starting in April and uh, machining division in May. Uh, can you please indicate that uh, in terms of discussion with the earlier customers of JMT, uh, is this on track? How are you seeing the response of customers and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, your confidence level in terms of ramping up the uh, utilization? I think uh, we are very confident in terms of the overall uh, how GMT is shaping up. I think it has taken a little more time because of the deterioration in terms of equipment and uh, the infrastructure. But now almost everything is complete and are we going to get completed in the next uh, two months time. And most of the customers have confirmed that and uh, we are we have already started re -audit, getting re-audited by the customers. So one by one, the audits have been lined up, and gradually we will see most of the customers, and we want to come uh, to come back. Is going to be back in by I think October. So we are looking at almost uh, going to back to uh, almost 80 percent of utilization <laughs> in FY26. Got it, sir. <laughs> and, uh, uh, sir, with reference to the one day Bharat order, uh, congratulations on the prestigious order. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, the timeline, uh, would it be, a, you know, uh, roughly, uh, it is, is there clarity whether it will be a three year, five year? 
how, what could be the length of the order sir no this order is for next two years time and okay. but what we, this is order is only for 32 sets 32 printers but actual requirement is for 200 printers so after building the prototype uh, and supplying the proto and it gets validated we feel that this 32 opportunity opportunity is going to get converted to at least 100 to 150 printers so if that really happens through we will be booked up to 2029 wonderful sir wishing you all the best for that and uh, 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 you know in terms of acil and mpl uh, would it be possible to approximately indicate the revenue and margins for the quarter for the current quarter ravu for 24 24 yes sir q4 sir so, uh, if you look at the mpl the 90 core was the turnover for uh, Q4 and the margin was somewhere around 16 and half percent on the EBITDA side. ACI was just a small uh, turnover of around 9 core for the quarter, and uh, I think the EBITDA margin was almost nil on this level, and it will improve on the scale up uh, happens on the EBITDA side. Perfect. And so, like uh, uh, the earlier indicated target of 125 crore for ACI and 525 crore for NAPL, uh, would you believe they are on track? Yes, it's on track. Wonderful. Uh, sir, lastly, in terms of the quarterly result, uh, so so uh, you explained the realization improvement. Uh, in terms of other income, what led to the other income jump, sir? So, Raghu, it's uh, contained two three element other income. One is on account of foreign exchange or non-operating assets, so it can always come. And go, but there is an interest income because we have the QIP and we have the fund, the liquid fund. So the entire fund could not be utilized on time. I even you can see that on the 31st March we have lying cash on the balance sheet. So going forward, this uh, interest will go down, and similarly finance cost will also go down. So these are the major two components for the uh, other income. Got it, sir. And uh, 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 in terms of cross margin. Uh, it was a very uh, a strong number for the quarter, almost 54.3 percent. Uh, in terms of FI24, it was 51 percent around that, and FI23 was 52 percent. Uh, roughly, what would be the sustainable range you would say for the gross margin? So, Raghu, it will be somewhere around only 50 percent kind of thing, maybe one percent here and there. So that's just we will try to further improve upon that. This quarter, 54 percent is only due to the increase in export domestic ratio majorly. So, if you look at the per ton EBITDA, that is almost similar to what we had in the last quarter. So, little I will say little better than the last quarter. So, this kind of EBITDA per ton margin is quite sustainable, and uh, we will have all our endeavor to improve the margin further. There may be change in the gross margin depending upon the export domestic mix. Okay, but going forward. We feel this export is sustainable, so export remains that, and if uh, domestic also improves, uh, which uh, we are very confident of, so there will be little uh, change in the uh, margin on the northward side, in the in terms of toward 50 percent side. Got it, sir. Thank you so much. I'll call back to the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mithil Shah from Dam Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, Mr. Mitra, you go. Go for a question. We will move to the next. The next question is from the line of Sanket Sora from. An individual investor, please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So I've been an investor with uh, RCFL for now almost eight years, and would really like to uh, congratulate the management for uh, expertly navigating the company through these uh, trying times, and uh, really appreciate your support, sir. Hello, am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Sanket. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So my question is, uh, there was uh, one of the An announcement from your end that you have engaged uh, a leading management consulting uh, firm for almost 18 months, right? 
so could you talk us through what would be the uh, you know focus area where they are you know enabling or supporting uh, the firm and uh, what has been the progress so far on that front so sanket i don't think we can discuss much on the debt uh, you just uh, you will see in the coming period what the improvement we can't go into the specific the areas they are working on it's really difficult for us to divulge all about okay okay fair point and uh, so and any update on the uh, the electric tv order that went on for because there have been sub, uh, certain developments on the on customer front even where they have talked about uh, a certain realignment of their focus so any uh, further uh, you know inputs you can share on that front can you repeat your question uh, yeah so there was a, a project uh, from a you know, largest tv player which went on hold right electric largest tv electric player uh, which was announced and then it went on hold so any further updates on that front no i think there is no update on that front we will uh, inform the industry at the right opportunity okay okay and thanks once again sir for i uh, don't and sharing the detailed presentation really helps a lot I appreciate your support thank you A reminder to all participants: You may press star and want to ask question. The next question is from the line of Richa from Equity Master. Please go ahead. So thank you for the opportunity. My question is uh, related to the domestic and export mix. Uh, where do you see this mix uh, three years from now? And if you could also uh, give some sense of the margins, the export margins are better. So on a gross margin basis, what kind of differential would be there between domestic and export? I think in the next three years horizon, we are looking at almost fifty fifty in terms of exports and domestic. And in terms of exports, uh, there is higher margin and better realization opportunity for us. And with the uh, mix changing and more trust on exports, we expect at least hundred to two hundred basis points margin improvement going forward. So, Okay, and what is the differential between, uh, you know, gross margins in do domestic and export? So it's very difficult to tell because it is like uh, um, product to product is different. But you know, so that's the export margin. Export sales is contain the element of sea trade also. So that's why it goes higher by that. Otherwise, it's a hundred to one hundred point more than the domestic margin. Okay. And sir, what about your auto and non-auto mix? Uh, you know, similar timeline, two to three years down the line. And uh, my understanding is that non-auto has better margin. So, if you could just give a sense of the margin between auto and non-auto. Well. Hello. Hello. Yeah, Hello. Uh, I'm not sure if my question uh, was audible. I was asking yeah, yeah. to make so it's fine. You see, not auto uh, and auto. If you look at the current quarter number, we are at seventy-seven point one auto versus seventy-seven point nine uh, last quarter. So there is again an improvement in quarter on quarter in auto and non-auto, and it will continue. We have already seen appear also that my auto and non-auto will be seventy thirty is the first target, then sixty forty over a period of four to five years. So we stick to that guidance, and certainly margin are better. And we have already given the blended margin where we will be in the next four five years, so we stick to the margin guidance also. Okay. Okay. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chirag Jain from Yogya Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, uh, sir. I have a query, uh, sir. How are we looking at uh, reducing our net debt? So you have already looked at Chirag at 522 going the net debt on the standalone side and uh, 818 on the uh, this console and we have given a guidance for FY25 and 26 which uh, you are very much uh, seeing in the our presentation if you are going through the presentation. Okay, so so we plan on that. Yeah. Okay, uh, sir. Also, uh, we have a high number of payable days. So do we? Pay something extra or for uh, getting some such a high line of credit? No, it's not that. So you can there will be extra that will have impact on the margin. We do innovate our data literally, data, and it is in commensurate with the value operation company is doing. And so there is no such thing. Now we pay. We do do not pay anything uh, for the payment. Okay. <coughs> uh, thanks. That's all from my side. Thank you. 
The next question is from the line of Sangeeta Purushottam from Kojito. Please go ahead. Question actually related to the numbers put on slide number twenty-eight. Now, again, you are given the breakup of the growth in the domestic market and the export market. Now, it seems as if you know we're seeing some kind of a slowdown in the domestic market, and your growth driver has really been exports. Uh, it would be very useful if you could just give us a sense as to how you see these two markets panning out over the next one to two years. And secondly, would it be fair to assume? That um, your acquisitions will play a key role in driving your growth, uh, also in the next one to two years. And what percentage of your growth can come from those? No, I think in domestic market, the market has stabilized, and we will see growth going forward. And I think the market is looking to see growth. And in the opening statement, the leader already said that uh, in the coming year we could see. At least 10 to 12 percent growth in the industry. So overall, we are looking at growth. And in terms of our acquisitions or uh, the company with whatever we have acquired over last one year, we, in terms of aligned, we are looking at 15 to 20 percent volume growth in terms of our consolidated. So, uh, as a combination, you should be doing about 15 to 20 percent volume growth in in the next year. That that's your guidance. Yes. Okay. And uh, so you have given in detail, um, uh, you know, all your um, capex uh, um, amounts that are consolidated and uh, level and subsidiary level, um, as well as the consolidated debt. Now, how is your working capital likely to move? And right. is that, yeah. Yeah, please tell you. Complete your question. Yeah. So uh, your work, would you, you know, if you add your working capital investments to this, then would they be, would you be able to bring down your consolidated debt as we have indicated? Yes. So if you look at my working capital base, it is 85 to 90 days right now that working capital base, and it will remain in these levels only. And considering those levels of working capital requirement, we have given our guidance on consolidated debt in the budget. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mumuksh Mandlesha from Anandati. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity again. Uh, so in Q4 quarter, uh, the domestic revenue saw a decline uh, with YOY and sequentially. Uh, what has led to the decline, sir? Can you repeat your question, please? Yeah, so the domestic revenue for this quarter has been a decline, sir, uh, sequentially. Uh, can you explain the reason why we saw decline, sir? So I, I think uh, we are well aware that last quarter there was considerable slowdown. I think in terms of commercial vehicles or the entire uh, commercial vehicle, including MC in the domestic market, and to a considerable slowdown. I think it has been much ahead. And Beyond Q, they have regrown basically in the domestic market. While we have continued to maintain what we have done in the last quarter, uh, and we feel that we have done much better than any on, on the in terms of expected line, we have done much better. Right. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, was there any uh, impact of the inventory reduction at the OEM end, uh, which impacted your volume? <laughs> Both inventory and as well as sales were affected uh, of the OEMs, and you can very well see with the uh, monthly numbers which came out for January, February, and March. So obviously that has impacted both in terms of their inventory cut down as well as sales numbers. But we, I think we have done, we are very confident that we have done much better than the industry average. We will continue to strive for that. Okay. I think you had mentioned about the freight uh, cost impact for this quarter. Uh, can you again re quantify that amount, sir? What is the amount sir, for this quarter? Can you repeat the freight cost? Sir, yeah, freight cost uh, this quarter, which was impacted. Um, <laughs> what was the amount, sir? So, uh, this quarter is higher by 17 more from the previous quarter. 17. And sir, you also mentioned, uh, mentioned about the Red Sea impact on the revenue side due to the shipments being delayed. 
uh, what is it amount sir for the Q4 and the Q4 year sir? We have already mentioned in the balance that in 20 plus 20 plus crores is the impact. We have not been recognized as this because of the impact. Okay, for this quarter. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dharval Shah from Greek Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello, sir. Uh, uh, so, uh, what is the current gross uh, asset turnover, and how do you see that changing over the next couple of years as our product mix changing within auto and also other segments uh, inching up? Uh, coal forging, scaling up, plus uh, oil and gas also coming in. So overall, there is, uh, as we move more towards a better value-added product, uh, over the next three-year period, how do you see this gross asset turn changing for the company? What is it currently? No, I think first of all, we don't take a three-month view. Three, three years, sir. I said three years. Three years. Can you provide in the numbers, please? Yeah, so uh, well, we don't calculate the asset term on the gross asset number. I think that's the misnomer because assets are even 20 year old and 30 year old and which have been fully depreciated. So how we can calculate that on the gross asset turnover? So that's why we take it on the net asset turnover, net asset value. Right? So you, you have very well seen it's a 1.9 plus in the net asset uh, turnover. So we will continue with that. We don't believe in the gross asset uh, uh, concept. Okay, and from here we have already given guidance. We will be somewhere around 2.5 to 3 on net asset turnover in next two to three years time. That we have also we have also said on our earning calls. Okay, up to 2.5 to 3. Okay, yeah. okay, and uh, that will be uh, mainly driven by which segment? If you can highlight, uh, like, would be that uh, what is it? That's a huge change we are going to see. So if you can talk a bit about that. So it will be a mix, as you know, see, we have already given guidance on the auto, non-auto, how it's going to grow, how the growth will come, 50 to 20% on the uh, total overall tonnage side. So I think it's very difficult to maintain on the what will be the futuristic affair sector-wise and that, that we don't do. Correct, correct, correct. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, no problem. Uh, helpful, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mithil Shah from Dam Capital. Please go ahead. So thank you for the opportunity again. So one clarification on cold forging side. As you indicated, full ramp up in FY26. So that would be 25,000 tons. Yeah, 25,000 tons will be the capacity for cold forging, yes. And you also highlighted revenues of around 225 crore kind of number. So that is translating into roughly 8 rupees <coughs> per kg kind of number. So that's why I'm surprised that from current level of 250 per kg uh, for coal forging, is it like a nearly 4x type of revenue per kg? Not at all, not at all. What you are saying, number of uh, so 25,000 ton is uh, can we, if we take it 200 rupees per kg, it's a 500 crore kind of revenue. Where it is, you have got the number of 900 crore. You know, sir, you highlighted the 200 crore full potential of that gold for him in the call earlier. You know, we have said, uh, I think, Mitchell, I think we are wrongly understood. We have said 250 crore rupees top line we are going to get from coal forging in the first next year of operations. Yeah, so that is what I am asking, sir. So 25,000 tons will get to 50 crore, is it like that? No, no, we don't. 50 crore will be somewhere around 10 to 50,000 tons to reach me, but I don't think that will be 50 crore revenue. Okay, so then they will not be full 100% utilization, right? Oh, yes. So wrap up will not happen in one or two quarters. Interesting, sir. And second, sir, just uh, if you can give more details on the export side for this quarter, such a decent double digit growth on YOY as well as sequential, whereas even in US also class X drug numbers are not very great. So, from where this growth is coming, is there any non auto element in that major contributor or within 
So are we gaining some sizable shares or any geography wise new addition? I think there are new order. Last year, the order wins whichever there have have started showing results, and these are basically those orders which are getting converted to sales, and that is showing this kind of growth. And I think this, uh, like Lalita said in his opening statement, this growth is sustainable going into the current big financial year. Okay, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants: you may press star and want to ask question. The next question is from the line of Shantanu Mantri from Think Investment. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir. Um, congratulations on you know very steady and consistent numbers. Um, so my question is um, mainly on exports. So I think for FY24, um, we've done around 59,000. Uh, tons, right? And um, based on our current, um, you know, order backlog, um, what would be the most conservative, you know, growth uh, that we see? Here? I mean, uh, for FY25, uh, this, this, are we comfortable uh, doing 17,000 tons uh, based on whatever our current order backlog, which is like around 20 percent growth? Shantanu, I would not like to put any definite number to it, but companies are aspiring to at least have a 15 to 20 percent volume growth, and overall. And I think premix for export to domestic is going to start change every quarter. And I think we are looking at at least this year to have at least 200 basis points uh, change in terms of the mix, in terms of increase in exports and reducing uh, domestic in terms of the overall balance sheet is concerned. Got it, got it. So, so when when we're saying overall 15 to 20 percent growth on a control level, um, uh, so so that's like uh, on a domestic level, if the industry is growing 10 to 12 percent, uh, uh, ideally we should also be doing that, and then uh, export should be slightly better. Correct. The yes. overall understanding is correct. Right? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's great. Sir. That's it for my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Raghunandan from Nuama Wealth. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for the opportunity again. Uh, sir, uh, in terms of uh, efforts to diversify towards non-auto, uh, last two years we have seen uh, the share uh, increasing for railways, mining, earth and construction equipments in exports. We have seen for oil and gas going up. uh trying to understand over the next 3 uh, to 5 years uh, how do you see the share of non auto increasing in overall share of revenue and no, i and think you know, in next 3 to 5 years we are looking at almost uh, 60 40 60% uh, automotive and 40% non automotive that's the company aspires to and we are working very diligently to achieve this and out of this railway is going to be uh, biggest uh, element of growth going into next 2 to 3 years oh got it sir thanks so much for that and a related clarification on the investment into jv for railway uh, compared to the last presentation this presentation the investment level is slightly higher over the next 2 years uh, uh, just trying to understand was it a spillover of FY24 going to 25, or is there any increase in investment happening there? No, I think total investment earmarked is close to around 200 and uh, anything between 210 to 240 crores. So each year we are looking at 70 crores plus investment. So whatever has been not been investment has been pulled over to this year. So I think Lalit can give you the exact number what we have invested last year and what uh, next two years we are looking at. So uh, Raghu, that's slightly uh, in uh, I mean uh, at a higher number because uh, we have little bit uh, added on the promoter contribution on the project cost uh, project side and reduce the rate number little bit for overall project cost remains same. And last year there is a spillover because if you look at the last presentation there is a eight crore spillover to the next year in terms of investment. So it's a mix of that. Hmm. Got it. So. and and so it's like uh, in terms of the capacity because the capacity is large and apart from the government orders even uh, 
non government orders exports have the potential uh, trying to understand uh, if you can talk about your efforts there and who are the potential customers for deals i think uh, ragu uh, we would not like to spell out the names but we can very confidently say that we we at rkfl rktr are not adding customers as of now because we feel that the market demand is very strong and we can get much better realization than what we have got for railways so we are waiting for the capacity to be up because we still have uh, more than a one and a half years for the capacity to start so we would at the appropriate time start intake of orders we would first start with the railway which is going to be our first year commitment and then start onboarding new customers so that we can get a better realization than what we have got for railways got it sir and this will be both right better realization as well as bigger deals in terms of size yes it it is mostly from north america and europe so europe is smaller because it is more on the metro side but north america is from the wagon and other places so i think that that is a bigger deal got it sir Uh, sir coming to ecil uh, there is the proposal to add the six cylinder crankshaft machining facility also uh, uh, that additional portion of 20000 metric ton uh, which can have a value as about 300 crores so so relating to that whatever capex has to be incurred is it already part of the subsidiary capex indicated or is it over and above that No, it's part of that. Whatever we have indicated in subsidiary capex for the future, it is part of that revenue only. So nothing beyond that we estimate. Got it, sir. And uh, just the last question in terms of standalone capex, again compared to the earlier uh, presentation or estimate, there is a small increase in standalone capex. So anything to call out there? No, not specific. So there are a lot of. Uh, equipment we keep on adding and it happens uh, time to time depending upon the customer's requirement due to that this has happened got it got it sir uh, uh, and just a clarification uh, how much would be the uh, maintenance capex every year sir so it should be around 40 to 50 crore every year on the maintenance side got it sir uh, very helpful sir thank you so much i'll fall back to the queue Thank you. A reminder to all participants: you may press star and want to ask question. <coughs> If there are no further questions from the participants, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. thank you i take this opportunity to thank everyone for joining the call i hope we have been able to answer and address all your queries for any further information kindly get in touch with us or our investor relationship advisors thank you very much for sparing your time and joining our call thank you thank you on behalf of norma wealth management that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines thank you <laughs>